Welcome, dear listener, to the Secrets for a Happy Life podcast, born from my desire to share the knowledge I've acquired on leading a better life, interwoven with diverse experiences from my travels, years of studying psychology, and life lessons. I'm Petra Kmetitz Bittens, your guide on this journey on rediscovering joy, productivity, and the essence of living a fulfilled life. Recently, I was emotionally blackmailed, and despite my background in psychology, I felt the effects. I refused to cave in, but still the manipulation techniques the person used lingered on me for a couple of days. It is important to know how to recognize this type of behavior to arm ourselves with the knowledge to identify it. If you've ever found yourself craving approval to an unhealthy degree, shying away from conflicts, sacrificing your peace to avoid discord, or plagued by self-doubt, then today's discussion isn't just beneficial, it's essential. These traits can make you a prime target for emotional manipulators. And you don't want to be there. In this episode, we are shining a light on the complexities of emotional blackmailing. I know, the term blackmailing is usually linked to criminals and mean people. It is highly difficult to think that maybe your friends, children, parents or significant other is blackmailing you. We will look into what you can do to protect yourself, how to recognize this harmful behavior and how to avoid it. Emotional blackmail is a powerful form of manipulation in which people close to us threaten, either directly or indirectly, to punish us if we don't do whatever they want. At the heart of any kind of blackmail is one basic threat, which can be expressed in many different ways. If you don't behave the way I want you to, you will suffer, wrote Dr. Susan Forward in her book Emotional Blackmail. We will be taking cues from Dr. Susan to explore the dynamics of this manipulative technique. Emotional blackmailers leverage their intimate relationship with us to coerce our compliance, exploiting our feelings of fear, obligation and guilt, collectively known as FOG, to assert dominance and control. And if you give in, you fall into the pattern of letting them use you as they please. Emotional blackmailers aren't only men. It can be your sweet mother or friend you are doing some projects together. It has no gender, no age, and you cannot predict it. You feel there is something wrong, you feel resentment and anger, and if you don't recognize it, they will wield you further on. Blackmailers use fog, fear, obligation and guilt as their weapons. This is their ticket to feeling safe and in charge. They are operating out of high degrees of anxiety, and when we obey their commands or silent pleas, they feel powerful. This tool is their defense against feeling hurt and afraid. Remember, emotional blackmail requires two participants, the manipulator and the compliant. By refusing to play along, you disrupt the transaction. Today, we will empower you to recognize when you're being emotionally blackmailed, understand the motives behind it and learn how to respond assertively to reclaim your emotional freedom. Stay tuned as we dissect the mechanics of emotional blackmail, reveal how to dismantle its grip on our lives and pave the way for healthier, more autonomous relationship. Press like or follow for more and help the community to grow. Let's check out the categorization crafted by Dr. Susan Forward, identifying the four main types of emotional blackmailers. The punisher, self-punisher, sufferer and tantalizer. Each employs distinct tactics to manipulate and control, weaving a complex tapestry of coercion that can entangle us in guilt, obligation and fear. The punisher stands clear in their approach, comply or face dire consequences. Their threats, ranging from financial disinheritance to the withholding of love and even threats to personal safety, are designed to instill fear and submission. 
This type of blackmailer wields power with a clarity that leaves little room for misunderstanding, often believing their demands are just. Punishers are the most obvious ones. It is my way or the highway. They will override you no matter how you feel or what you need. Sentences like, if you don't do what I want, I will cut you out of my will. If you try to divorce me, you will never see the kids again. Or, if you don't work overtime, you can forget about promotion. Those statements are scary and harsh. We know exactly what will happen if we don't do what they want. Sometimes they execute their threats, sometimes they don't. But you can never know how they will react. The self-punisher takes manipulation inward, threatening self-harm if their demands are not met. This tactic places their well-being squarely on your shoulders, creating a crisis that demands your compliance to avert perceived disaster. Such blackmailers often cast themselves as victims. Often they are extremely needy and dependent. They believe that they are pure victims and you are here to make their life easier and better. Then we have the sufferer. Master of guilt, manipulated by invoking pity and remorse. They claim abandonment and neglect, skillfully playing the victim to make you feel responsible for their emotional state. This subtle form of tyranny demands your attention and compliance, not through direct threat, but through an implied obligation to alleviate their suffering. They mastered the game. Guess what you did to me? When you ask what is wrong, they will <sighs> sigh and say nothing. And you have to figure it out what is on their mind. Sufferers look weak on the outside, but are actually a quiet form of a tyrant. The last one is the tantalizer. And the tantalizer offers the lure of reward. They promise us heaven only if we obey them. This carrot on a stick approach manipulates by exploiting our desires and hopes, making obedience seem like the key to achieving elusive gratification. At the core of these tactics is the manipulation of guilt and obligation. Blackmailers instigate a dynamic where refusing their demands labels you as uncaring or selfish. They exploit societal and personal values of care and responsibility, twisting them to serve their ends. Emotional blackmail thrives on the fear of loss, whether it be financial security, familiar bonds, or social standing, leveraging it to compel compliance. It is crucial to recognize that you are not responsible for another's emotional state. The guilt that blackmailers induce is undeserved. It is a tool used to manipulate and control. Understanding this is the first step in freeing yourself from the grip of emotional blackmail, enabling you to assert your boundaries and reclaim your autonomy. Let's repeat. Emotional blackmail manipulates through obligation, fear and guilt, exploiting our deepest insecurities and desires for connection and approval. Understanding the nature of this manipulation is the first step towards liberation. Recognizing our role in this dynamic is vital. Often, without realizing it, we may enable the blackmailer by prioritizing their needs over our own, out of desire to be a good partner, parent or friend. This unconscious compliance fuels the cycle of manipulation. It is essential to acknowledge our feelings of resentment or fear of losing the relationships as signals that we've allowed unhealthy patterns to persist. To break free from emotional blackmail, we must hop on a journey of self-empowerment, learn new communication strategies, and the resolve to reclaim control over our decisions. We need to stop the autopilot we are on and start using different tactics. Even if you believe you can't stand those strong emotions, I can assure you that you are more capable as you think you are. It won't be pleasant, but 
you will feel better in the long run. You can stand it. Promise yourself you are no longer willing to let fear, obligation or guilt control your decisions. Don't tolerate anything that is harmful to your health. It is important to understand that all this is not about you. It may seem and feel like it is, but it's not. This tool is for stabilizing the person who is using them. It makes them feel powerful and secure. It is fear-based, anxiety-based and insecurity-based. You can understand them, but this is not an excuse to keep on using emotional blackmailing. Strategies for resolving emotional blackmail You can try instead of apologizing yourself or pleading or explaining, you can try non-defensive communication. On their pressures, you can respond with, I'm sorry that you are upset. Yelling or sulking or crying is not going to resolve the situation. Let's talk when you will be calmer. These phrases are core of non-defensive communication. Do not defend or explain yourself. Repeat those phrases even if they feel awkward to you. Practice what you will say out loud so you will be comfortable with it. You can ask yourself, what am I afraid of? What is the worst thing that could happen? What's your fantasy of what could happen? And you can also try this technique. Set an alarm for five minutes and worry. Think about the fear you feel when you are emotionally blackmailed. Oh, they will leave me. I will be left alone. Or what is it for you? And let it steam. Indulge into worrying, but after five minutes, tell those thoughts to leave. If they will want to visit you during the day, tell those thoughts, the intrusive thoughts, they can come tomorrow when you have your five-minute worry time. This will put you back into the driver's seat. You can also use the technique from episode 7, feeling guilt. It will show you a funny way of dealing with feelings of guilt. Just try it. Listen to episode 7. In closing, remember that while the journey to overcoming emotional blackmail may be challenging, you are not alone. The path to a happier, healthier life lies in recognizing your worth, establishing boundaries and nurturing relationship built on mutual respect and genuine affection. Thank you for joining me on Secrets for a Happy Life podcast. It's been a privilege to share the, these insights and strategies with you. May you find the strength and courage to navigate the complexities of emotional relationship, fostering connections that enrich you and uplift you. Until next time, keep seeking, keep growing and remember, the key to a happy life is within your grasp. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.